thank you, Mikhailo, for joining us at Por Tierra Mar y Aire podcast. We are very excited for this opportunity to bring Aerodotvitka's voice to English and Spanish-speaking military and defense professionals and enthusiasts. Our audience is quite tech-savvy, and they are eager to hear about your uh, technical details of all the Aerodotvitka say ecosystem. So um, let's start with the beginning of Aerodotvitka. Who and why? Who launched this project? What were the most urgent needings in 2014? Uh, so, Juan, uh, first of all, I just express my gratitude to you uh, for your time for, and for your attention. Uh, so, uh, I'm with pleasure, uh, will explain uh, about Ira Rosvitka. And answering your question, the creation of Ira Rosvitka was Uh, the response of the active part of our society to the annexion of uh, Crimea and partial occupation of the Donetsk and Luhansk region. Uh, the founder of our community was uh, Volodymyr Kochetkov Sukach, who unfortunately tragically died in uh, 2015. In 2014, we needed uh, almost everything. The army's technical support was almost non-existent. It was mostly done through volunteers and donors. Uh, we used consumer level drones but at the time even that was a huge innovation uh, so we needed drones also to monitor the moment uh, of enemy forces uh, we used long range ptz cameras which uh, equipped uh, the entire lines of uh, demarcation it was uh, then that uh, Then the idea of creation a Delta situational awareness system was born. Uh, we also needed a lot of different related uh, things, uh, some network equipment, cables, etc. As well as uh, large uh, and, and as well as uh, large monitors for the equipment uh, of the first situational centers okay so let's let's talk about the first drones what models did you did you use for instance i mean ddi phantoms anything else and why so uh dji phantom was most accessible uh, model of uh, drone uh, in our country so We we use we used that we have uh, we don't have some military grade uh, mil military grade drones uh, we we have only only toys but okay. but by that toys uh, we made some success. Uh, uh in in the past in in the in the 2014 so after all uh, although they seem to be uh, toys they were actually quite useful right yes yes quite quite useful uh and quite effective and uh they didn't expect that we can use some toy drones uh, to observe uh, their location, their moves and uh, their consistence. So I guess that you cannot um, define a thing as a toy if the thing is so harmful for the enemy, right? Yeah, yeah, quite, quite harmful, yeah. Okay, so 
let's talk about the first years let's say 2014 15 etc what did you learn what did work and what didn't what kind of operations did you execute and uh, above all how did your doctrine evolve Mm. So, so uh, answering your question, uh, mm -hmm. in the first years we gained experience and uh, connections in the security and defense forces of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, we studied the behavior of the enemy and changed our tactics accordingly. Uh, we struggled with the powerful Soviet legacy and the corruption. Uh, nepotism and rigidity and in in our military our groups uh, conducted air reconnaissance and strike raids monitored uh, enemy movements with cameras and improved general situational awareness uh, in fact we have uh, started to implement innovative capabilities uh, that meet uh, nato standards and uh, establish effective cooperation with the uh, rep representatives uh, of this organization. It was in us and other like us that NATO saw the future of the Ukrainian M. I see. So let's advance to your own models say 2014 and 2015 are like the prehistory of quads and small drones both in concepts and components um what difficulties did you have to overcome in order to produce your own models what did you want to achieve with them so uh we have set up our own uh, r d department uh, there were many experiments and mistakes. Uh, the supply of components was uh, unsystematic. Uh, funding was unstable. But uh, we sought uh, to create a military level apparatus capable uh, of carrying a sufficient payload for a sufficient distance. Most importantly, this drone should not have cost as much as a as a luxury car or as a military grade drone uh, which produced by uh, well-known companies and cost more than more than 100 uh, of thousand dollars so you want to be uh, let's say dollar savvy you you want to get as much drones as possible right as much as much uh, as much drones as possible the many drones the better ah um yeah 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 of course but uh but uh serial production of our model uh, started in uh, 2019. Oh, I see. Uh, before before that, uh, we just experimented, and and of course we we flight uh, and we worked by this uh, by these ones, mm -hmm. but uh, but it uh, was not stable model. It's like another iteration of some concept. I see. So you learn with the example, right? Just practicing with it. Yeah. Okay. So which new components did impact uh, more in your operations and why? I'm thinking, let's say, in firmware, Arduino evolution, controllers, uh, new radio TX technologies, etc. Which components were the most important and most uh, influent in your developments? Uh, we exp 
exper we experimented with different types of controllers, processors, modems, uh, thermal cameras, uh, and so forth. Uh, their supply was uh, hampered by expert restriction, so they had to resort to various tricks. Only now uh, are we starting to establish direct a relationship with suppliers such as FLIR, for example. Uh, I see. And uh, okay, and now uh, we can say that we have direction uh, direction re relationship with FLIR because it's not a secret now. Uh, but I can disclose uh, different brands. Uh, which we uh, which we want to work with. I see. So, uh, tell us about your most famous system, the R18. When did you start with it? What do you want to achieve with it? And uh, why? Also, you talk. Uh, if you can explain more about why commercial models were not enough. Because, I mean, for instance, in the Middle East, say in Iraq or in Syria, uh, different groups use just raw commercial models. Could you explain to us why it was not enough? Why do you uh, develop the R18? So we, we, uh, we, was, uh, we were starting from commercial mm -hmm. models. Yeah. You know? As, yeah. as Anton and so forth and uh, we uh, in, in, in some time we started to feel the lack of uh, capabilities uh, which provide us uh, the commercial models and uh, and we need we need uh, more secure connection, uh, more payload, more uh, more far distance, and so forth. And and uh, maybe main thing, uh, it's a cost of production. Okay, the cost of production of our drone. Uh, significantly lower the than the cost of uh, military grade drone uh, like i don't know like cadent or sky ranger or, or or something different okay so now let's move uh, to today the 2022 invasion started how how were the first weeks of, for Aerodot Bitka? What were your main achievements that you can tell us about? What were the main difference for you between 2014 and 2015 operations and current operations? So, uh, on the night of, the, of February, uh, between 24th of fe February and 25th, of February, our drones were already working uh, on the Hostomel airport. Uh, determine the concentration of enemy forces, correction the action of the other of our of, of other units, and uh, <clears throat> striking on their own. With the help of our drones and uh, members of our organization. Uh, a number of successful operations were carried out to stop that huge multi-kilometer convoy. Yeah, I remember it's that. Well-known uh, mm -hmm. pictures about this convoy, uh, which lasted from uh, Belarus border to yeah, to almost Kiev. Uh, we cut off supplies to the first echelon forced them to stop, sprayed them in small piles and methodically destroyed them either on our own or by adjusting artillery fire. 
and uh, the Delta situational awareness system played a critical uh, role in this in the in the interaction between the various uh, departments. Mm -hmm. where, 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 uh, various uh, departments of uh, the uh, defense forces of Ukraine. I mean, uh, MFU, SBU, and uh, National Guards, uh, police, um, military administrations, and so forth. So it's the first uh, situational awareness system in Ukraine, uh, which provide possibility to different parts of our forces. I think that this is quite revolutionary, not only for you and not only for Ukraine, but in a much broader sense. I mean, uh, the, the capabilities that Delta system has carried with it are not sort of... Um, a game changer, right? Uh, yes, yes, uh, we can say that. But yeah. uh, but I think uh, this uh, such 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 of these systems uh, already have uh, some NATO countries like like USA, Germany, and so forth. Uh, it's a uh, it's a system which uh, uh, which compatible with NATO standards, and oh, uh, and this system uh, our forces used in uh, in military games like Sea Weeks, Sea Breeze, uh, uh, and and other others uh, and uh, and NATO people uh said us uh, the systems this is the, the our system uh working working quite well yeah that's really impressive because after all you are a small organization and you have achieved a huge achievement like um um, um battlefield management system by yourself it's just... uh it's it's uh it's not uh, correct enough. It's okay. a, it's a uh, sensitive and uh, hard question for us because uh, the delta the, the the delta system is a property of uh, uh, center of innovation uh, and the ministry of defense. Okay, it's, okay. it's a, initially was a product uh, of Ira Rozvitka as a community of volunteers but I now see. it's a completely property of ministry of defense and uh, the officers who are working there uh, in the same time are uh, members of ira rosvitka ngo oh i see now it's more clear okay thank you so Let's talk about the defense against drones, the counter UAS. Um, what do you want to explain to our audience about how you overcome Russian CUAS systems? Oh, it's a very good question. Uh, honestly, uh, it's a hard to uh, interact. Uh, it's a hard to act under the uh, radio warfare uh, impact. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are consistent, consistently uh, inventing something. Okay. Uh, if we talk about DJI, uh, the uh, the mythical already anonymizer Olga 3 has been effective for some time. Uh, now with the release of the new firmware, operators have begun to use software solutions. Uh, and 
I'm sure these solutions uh, become obsolete soon, and we okay. sure. we will invent something new. Uh, if we do uh, not talk about uh, iroscope, uh, then yes, the enemy has powerful electronic warfare systems under the influence of which it is uh, difficult to fly. Uh, their professionalism and uh, ingenuity of our operators and uh, developers sometimes work wonders. Yeah, that's actually, you can say that, that's a wonder because... But, but I can't uh, provide you with uh, some precise technical information. Sure, you are in war after all, but I mean, uh, it is not sort of a wonder because uh, before the beginning of a war, a lot of analysts, let's say include myself, we thought that you know, the electronic warfare, the Russian electronic warfare was so powerful that it was going to be almost impossible to to fly small drones under the effects of such electronic warfare. But, come on, after 100 days, your group, and I have to say other groups, still fly their drones and cause huge effects of, on the uh, Russian forces. So it's actually a wonder. Yes, yes. We are continuing to use uh, small drones like DJI, Altel, uh, in some cases Parrot and so forth. Uh, but in the same time, especially now, especially in the East or South, yeah, uh, we are losing dozens of such of drones every day oh my yes it's like it's like uh bullets like you know you yeah. you you i don't know uh, i don't know how how to explain but uh it's like uh expendable yes yes sure well, after all, you have to expand if you or you want to continue your operations. And there is no shortcut for that. So, if you want, let's talk about the current operations. As far as you can explain, what are Aerodotvitka's main contributions to the Ukrainian war effort? How do you collaborate with other units of the U Ukrainian armed forces? So, uh, I think the main, uh, uh, the main thing uh, which Rosvitka do in this war, it's a, or, or one of the main things. Okay. Uh, it's a, a developing of the net of the regional situational uh, centers, which used delta system oh i see now now uh we have our main situational awareness center in kiev obviously and uh kharkiv mikolaev dnipro zaporizhia chernihiv sumy and i think i think most of uh big cities uh will have the situational uh, center which uh, utilizes uh, the delta system oh i see and um let's say uh, beyond situational awareness what can you tell us about uh, cyber security ai radio reconnaissance as you told me yes uh Regarding AI, uh, part of our team working on this subject. Uh, the main goal to recognize uh, enemy's vehicles 
uh, on uh, video from drones and on some some video and photo from from the land uh, view and uh, we already um, significant success with it because because unfortunately uh, we have uh, maybe maybe the most data set in in the world absolutely uh, if, if, if we went, if, if we not count Russia <laughs> Yeah, I see. No, that, that's actually very interesting because, yeah, it is a disgrace that you have such a huge data set because you have, ha you have had um, a huge story of, of harmful events in the last months. I mean, a lot of um, aerial photos of Russian armor vehicles, uh, etc. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, what by, can you do? By different uh, angles, by different projection, and so forth. Uh, so yeah. The our uh, neuron net uh, obtain maximum information uh, to to work with. Yeah. So you are getting closer and closer to an actual and effective uh, computer vision system which can identify targets by itself? Mm, it's not clear enough for me. Can you rephrase okay. maybe? Okay, let's say your uh, uh, photographic data set is growing every day, right? Yes. So yes. I guess that your uh, computer vision system is uh, getting closer and closer to an actual capability of ident identify targets uh, by itself and be more and more autonomous. Yes, in yes, 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 yes. We very close to this, and uh, we very close to the uh, transmitting data directly from the drone. To the Delta system. Wow, really? So, I guess that you are uh, getting the kill chain shorter and shorter, right? You have to uh, uh, use less and less seconds in order to complete an order, for instance. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so what can you tell us about the mosquito fleet? Because you told me about the mosquito fleet during the first days of the war. Uh, yeah, uh, we convened everyone who owns uh, drones and uh, organized a mosquito fleet. Uh, okay. It's ordinary people began to trans transmit intelligence data to the system. Uh, the system allowed the exchange of such data between different uh, structures of the Ukrainian forces. Uh, so it's uh, regular citizens which have, for example, Mavic 3 or Mavic 2. Uh, it's a DJI drone. Mm -hmm. It's a, again, toy drone. It's like drone for uh, recording weddings for instance <laughs> or or something uh, or some uh, peaceful events mm -hmm. uh, yes and uh, with help of these drones and with help of uh, these heroes uh, we started to obtain the intelligence information about the movement and locations and and, and so forth uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you watched uh, the some report. I don't remember which company made it uh, about the uh, schoolboy in some village uh, near Kiev under the occupation. Yeah, uh, yeah. He 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 used uh, his toy drone. Uh, to observe the uh, 
close close territory close to him i mean uh and uh, then by mobile phone he worked with uh, one of the delta operator mm -hmm. uh, and sent uh, sent uh, very valuable information to the delta it's a it's a regular school boy man who, who became uh, an intelligence officer <laughs> and uh, a very brave one indeed you know because he was uh, risking his life if the yes. russians detect him of course of course because uh we know uh we know these gloomy uh examples when the regular yeah. people who interact uh, with with uh, our forces uh, was killed by russians for that yeah and it's very difficult to describe and talk about it because people are um, saving the country and the, the last drop of blood yes and and use uh that things uh which which they have now in 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 their hand so okay. uh we we are ready to fight with uh, uh with uh, uh different means from from consumer drone uh and 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 one stick <laughs> to 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 modern uh, warfare but uh anyways that mosquito fleet it's the very first time in human history that thousands of volunteers using small drones have obtained such an effect, right? There is yes. no precedent for that. Yes, more or less. Uh, many, many people uh, who help us to fill the Delta by information uh, mm -hmm. after the Kiev operation became a military and go to the east and go to the uh, south yeah okay so what are the main lessons that you have obtained from your efforts in 22 until now what are the main uh, consequences your main lectures your main um uh results that you want to uh, you want us to hear about so we have seen in practice uh that it is possible to counter an enemy who has the upper hand uh both in uh, uh, technology and manpower using robotics capabilities and uh, uh, net centric uh, net centric methods uh of war so i think that uh you have to adapt all your developments from 2016 to 2020 very quickly in order to adapt yourself to the new situation right because it was very different from the old one uh during the the previous war right um it's not it's not too different okay uh, because uh, because uh, our professionals uh, work eight years already and uh, they connected with uh, the war consistently uh, during the all these eight years and uh, they know the behavior of enemy and uh, and uh, enemy tactic and so forth uh, uh, uh maybe maybe one difference uh, which we feel that it uh it acting not far from our home yeah uh for uh, on the east for example it's acting 
in our home. My my home personally, my home was under occupation, and my oh, my. my family was under occupation. And uh, uh, and uh, Kiev was under the real danger. And uh, this this main difference between situation uh, before this uh, large scale invasion and after. Yeah, but let's say during 2014 2015 you don't have an any uh, anyone uh, didn't have any system such as delta and you explained to us once and again that it has achieved a huge result right yes yes but uh some similar systems uh already exist uh, in uh, 2015 maybe uh, it is this called uh, me SOS okay right so what can you tell us about your future is there any plan beyond the here and now how is Aerodotvitka is going to develop, uh, as far as you can tell us, for, for sure? Yeah, we are developing new directions, uh, increasing the production of strike drones, R18, creating a school of uh, UAV operators, and, uh, and, uh, and the expert center, and uh, even uh, we think about uh, the certification center because uh, in our country the uh, institution of certification uh, drone operator uh, don't exist. I see. Uh, uh, also, we are expanding the coverage of the Delta system uh opening new uh regional situational centers uh, and uh, now our organization uh receives uh recognition and support from uh, international partners uh in the last couple of months, our member uh, ha has has doubled. Okay. So our, I get our, our number. Our number has doubled. Okay. So, um, but I guess that, or I hope and I pray for that, that there is going to be a ceasefire in the next months. So. Do you have any plans after that? Mm, you mean after the victory? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Poviada. Yeah. Premoha. Premoha. Tak. Poviada it's a Russian word. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so the plan after the victory. Uh, regarding the drones, uh, this model, uh, I think we can expand like uh, like a multi-purpose model, not not only strike drone. You know, okay. it's a, it's, it it can be it can be uh, fire guard purpose, mm -hmm. patrol purpose. Uh, drones which uh, will be used in uh, for example some uh, natural reserves to secure them um, and and then uh, the situational uh, awareness system uh, can be can be civil 
Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, before the war, uh, I mean before the this invasion, uh, we uh, year year ago, one year ago, uh, we launched uh, the our our civil project in Chernobyl Reserve. Yeah. Uh, when we uh, planned to employ the situational awareness system, but f but for civil using, uh, because the territory uh, of Chernobyl Reserve uh, very very big, very huge. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, it's need to secure and uh, need to observe. Uh, from the security team, from the uh, scientist team. This this our this our future after the victory. I think. Absolutely, and I guess that you have a very bright future if you want to export all of the lessons that you ha you have paid so uh, so hard for them to Europe. I mean, what you learned in your country you can export them and you can offer your services to Europe, right? Yes, maybe. We are joking now that uh, now we are trying to uh, to be more closer to uh, NATO standards. Uh, but the but but after the our victory, uh, the NATO should change their standards uh, oh my. <laughs> regard, regarding the Ukrainian experience. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, uh, let me say that that is not a joke after all, because you are so much in advance to um, quite a number of NATO partners in, uh, in the sense in, uh, of drone use and drone lessons, that it is not going to be a joke at all. I do hope that a lot of armies and security forces are going to learn a lot from you. Yes, yes, and they are uh, already learning now. Right. They, they, they try to, to, to obtain our data uh, sets uh, regarding the uh, vehicle recognitions and yeah. so forth. Okay, so uh, Mikhailo, what can the uh, my, uh, our audience or the Spanish public can do uh, for you. How can we help uh, Aerodotvitka and Ukraine cows in order to uh, help you with the victory? So, uh, first of all, I'd like to express uh, my personal gratitude and uh, the common gratitude of our organization and our country uh, for all help and for all support uh, which we uh, obtaining every day uh, from over the world. Uh, it's uh, very, very helpful, useful and uh, valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we never forget uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we will uh, grateful for, for our supporters from over the world I think all time. And uh, now, uh, so uh, uh, months ago, and many, may, maybe two months, months ago, uh, we said that we need more drones that we can send us. But now uh, we are establishing the direction, uh, the direct uh, relationship between us and uh, big suppliers of man or, or even manufacturers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we need now to buy uh, some drones from some I don't know uh, internet stores okay uh, we, we already buying them uh, from manufacturers or big suppliers so uh, for that we need funds obviously and okay. uh, we can use these funds mm, optimal if we compare the buying uh, from the internet store and buying from big supplier uh, by by lower price. Oh, I see. 
is uh, uh, am, am I am I understandable enough uh, in this part? Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> and how can people help uh, you with the funds? What are the main ways to uh, offer you funds? Uh, so I, uh, I I'll send you a link to our page. Uh, okay. It it has uh, the nation part. Uh, there we have a uh, number of uh, accounts in different currencies, uh, including even uh, crypto. Including and, crypto, right? And, and yes, and donors uh, can choose a more convenient way uh, to help us by, by more convenient currency or more convenient uh, way like PayPal or or swift or crypto it's if i am right this is the this is your page and the, the site the our public has to go right like aero.bica yes, 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 okay exactly. mm -hmm. so i encourage to our audience to help you because it has sound once and again that a very small group of people has obtained a huge success and has support and loved uh, your country in the darkest hours. It's like Sir Winston Churchill once said, uh, never in history uh, so many hours, so much to so few people. Uh, excuse me, I have a little bit of a flu, so my memory is not perfect, but the message was quite right. And I have to say, that now that this is the second time that the phrase of Sir Winston Churchill apply. Um, um, so, Mikhailo, do you want to uh, to talk or to explain to us something else about out of Bitka or whatever you want? A, a so, final uh, message? Now, now you almost uh, said by uh, my own words. Uh, Aerorozvitka, it's a, it's a new, unique format uh, of uh, interaction uh, between uh, civil society and state. I see. Uh, in the, in the uh, normal situation, in the peace situation, uh, NGO can't be a part of the uh, of the uh, uh, this process, you know. Uh, but now we can uh, we can do some impact in providing innovation in our area, and uh, and and uh, without hesitation we can say that we are one of the most powerful locomotive of uh, innovations in our M. Okay. Well, uh, it has been um, a unique opportunity and I do want uh, my audience to hear each one of your words because you have provided us a lot of very interesting technical details which uh, can help us to understand what you are doing and what you are going to do. So, I would like to end mm, wishing you uh, your deserved victory because as uh, uh, your, uh, the pres President Zelensky says, and I think it's quite precise. The future of Europe is in your hands. So, because of that, I deserve you victory, and I want to I, I want to thank you for uh, for your time, for all the details, the the story, and just I would like to uh, to say that uh, this podcast is open for Iron Bitka for any kind of help that we can provide or any other further opportunity 
to explain more things about your activities or systems or whatever. So feel yourself at home in Por Tierra Mar y Aire uh, from the time being. And uh, personally, thank you, Mikhailo, for all your time because, I mean, this is not a normal episode because, after all, you are in war. You are in a very dire situation and you have um, you have used some of your time with me for my audience. So thank you in the name of all, all, all of our audience. And um, as I say, uh, the more we can help, the better. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention and time. And I'll, I, I'd like to excuse uh, for the delay of uh, the answers. <laughs> Come on, you are in war, man. And and uh, I think uh, it's a first hour meeting, but I think it's not maybe a last hour meeting because the uh, so. situation uh, is developing constantly. And uh, maybe uh, we could uh, share with you some uh, new interesting information. In future, I really, I, I really would appreciate that. Indeed, in the future, you, when you have time, you want to explain or even show us more about the R18 or any other nonsensible information that you can share in public. We will really, really appreciate it. So, so I, I, I hope, I hope you, uh, you. Uh, one of the main questions in the future uh, will how you get victory? Yeah, absolutely. I, ho I really hope so. <laughs> okay, Mikhailo. So thank you for your time. Muchísimas gracias. And gracias. see you next time. See you.